Great to see you. Um, Good to see you. Wanted to ask a couple questions about uh, our upcoming class discussion that starts in about six weeks in September. Yep, um, can't it's wait. It's not that far away. Yeah. No, it's um, not. So anyway, one of the things I just want to ask you, like what you're looking forward to about the class and the discussion, because it, it is six months long. But <laughs> Right. Well, one of the things I'm looking forward to is the folks that are involved, because I, I haven't been in a context where the book of Revelation was the subject for a long time. And, um, me neither. <laughs> and, and, and to have all these different voices. For me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of for me too, man. You and I both grew up where, you know, it was a closed book. Oh, and it was dispensational to the max. To the max. And, uh, and I was that way until in college when I got slipped a, a series by Malcolm Smith. And I remember weeping my way through that series. I mean, I, I had, to, had to do it on the sly because the school I was at was dispensational in terms of its eschatology, its end time stuff. And dispensation, that basically means that there are these cut and dried periods of God's activity. And um, the eschatology of that community, um, which came out of a lot of Darbyism, um, that eschatology was, as many of you are familiar with, was um, there's going to be a rapture, little conversation whether it was pre-tribulation or mid-tribulation or post-tribulation, but there's going to be these, ours was always pre-trib, right? So oh, yeah, yeah. we got out of here and then all hell broke loose on the planet, basically. And uh, there was the, the beast. So when I was growing up, the beast was the... 10 League of Nations in Europe, right? And, and there was a big computer. I mean, they really got down to detail. So I grew up with Hal Lindsey's late great planet Earth. And uh, I mean, it was fear-based, uh, but we didn't care because by chapter five, we were gone, you know? And, they, and they, they built that into the little verse, half a verse really, that when John was taken up into heaven. So he represents all the elect. So we were out of here. So who cared? Nobody cared right. what happened in the rest of the book. And then, you know, it was all basically fortune telling. And when Hal Lindsey came on the scene, he said it was 40 years from the time Israel became a nation. So 87 was the, <laughs> was the year. And, and um, so it was 1947, to because that's one generation, according to the idea. Yeah, this generation will not pass away. Correct. So 87 was our, our big target date. And, uh, um, and then things slide as they always do when you're involved in prophetic fortune telling. And, um, but we had the whole thing laid out. We had a big, big, huge satellite city, the New Jerusalem that would somehow be in orbit around the planet. You know, we get to be little bosses. Some of us were sheriffs and some of us, <laughs> you know, it was like, all, all your desire for power and, um, and land grabbing came into play in terms of this eschatology. It was really sick. Um, but a lot of us grew up that way. And, you know, I love Larry Norman's stuff, a lot of it. I, I think it's fantastic. But then he had, I wish we'd all been ready, which <laughs> then became sort of a theme song. We tried to evangelize our friends by warning them of all this turns out to be fiction, but hey, you know, we, we believed it was true. Uh, we were sincere about it. And, um, and there was just too many things about it that were pr problematic for me. And yeah. one is, it was a modern eschatology. And it totally depended on how things were going on this planet now. And, right. uh, and so, you know, Nobody could have understood it before our generation anyway. And, and now we had everything worked out. So we knew who the beast was and the whore of Babylon and all of these things. And it was, it was imprisoning. I, mm. I really felt trapped by it. And then before Malcolm Smith's stuff, I, I began to look at different ideas. And it was a revelation of Jesus. And I'm like, how is this a revelation of Jesus? 
And when Hendrickson's book I read and Malcolm's stuff, and like I said, I weeped my way through it. So since then, especially for the next decade, I spent a lot of time there. And I'm, I'm very grateful that in the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, in terms of scripture in the New Testament, you've got Genesis that starts with a garden and you've got Revelation that ends in a garden. And it really frames um, the entire scriptures. And you'll have more references to the Hebrew scriptures, what we call the Old Testament, in the book of Revelation than anywhere else in scripture. And it's, it is a revelation of Jesus using a very specific kind of genre, which is the use of signs and symbols. Yeah. And so everything is pointing somewhere else. But the only reason you see the beast or empire or all that is because Jesus is involved. And, but it is a revelation of Jesus. So, oh, and so... I mean, I started working on this and I, I had pages and pages of, if you can see, I uh, can't see it very well because my, yeah. I guess I got a mirrored thing, but, but look at my notes of the book of Revelation, right? These are, these are my notes and, um, and I've taught it, I don't know, like seven times or, which would be very appropriate for the book of Revelation. And <laughs> so... You know, and I now, and I've told you You can't you this. do this one. This would be the eighth time. It would just throw everything yeah, out. Right? Really, really. I'd probably miss the rapture. And uh, oh, yeah, but, that'll um, melt. Exactly. But I've told you that in, in some senses, I learned more about Jesus and my relationship to Jesus mm -hmm. out of the book, to the, uh, the book of, of the apocalypse, the, rebel, the unveiling of Jesus, mm -hmm. than than any other part of scripture. It just lit up so, so much that I was working on over the gamut of the entire uh, Bible. And, um, and Revelation just like brought so many pieces together. And so I'm, I'm thrilled about this. I'm also thrilled that, you know, there'll be other ideas and other perspectives and that'll only help me learn um, yeah. and other voices. Cause it has been quite a while since, um, I've dipped my toe into this revelation of Jesus. So I'm very excited about it. Yeah. And I, I think Paul, especially that last thing you just said, like so many people in our, from our tribe where we grew up, never even look at revelation to see what it is they can learn about Jesus. It's yeah. like, Jesus doesn't, he's like, he's almost like a side character. Like right. the main part of the story is really a, a sci-fi mega blockbuster, you know, special effects. Hor horror movie. Horror movie. Some, yeah. Exactly. Like, yeah. let's look at all this gloom and death and blood and vengeance you know, and yeah, like wrath. You know, and, wrath and, and Jesus, theme. let me tell you, one of the things that really disturbed me before mm -hmm. I, I began to see it as an unveiling of Jesus is that Jesus comes back and for a thousand years is in charge. Yeah. And he fails. <laughs> he yeah. doesn't even he doesn't even make it work. And right. it's like he can only uh, make it work for a thousand years before it unravels again. <laughs> I know, I know. So it was quite disappointing. <laughs> but then yeah. when you begin to see it as the revelation of Jesus, a man. I mean, it lights up everything. And well, that, uh, I I, th I just think that's so exciting because. Um, that's what the scriptures are supposed to do anyway, right? Yeah. Point us to yeah. Jesus. Yeah. And, you know, in our history, we for so long have forgotten that when we come to the book of Revelation. It's almost this, like, it, it really is. It's almost like a morbid curiosity about how we're all going to die, except for those of us that got to escape in chapter <laughs> four. Uh, so, but yeah, it, and, and that's true. It was. It was our fear finding some certainty and mm. our greed finding some power. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Our insecurity. Uh, I mean, we're going to, we're going to be in charge. So, you know, look out when we get it, we get to be in charge and tell people what to do. We're going to just, we're going to be so good at it. <laughs> the, the seeking of power and greed and vengeance. Come on, you know, what could, yeah. what could more appeal to the corrupted human condition? 
And that was our, that was the way we approached it. Yeah. No, that's awesome. I, I'm so looking forward to this because I, I just think it's going to be uh, not only fun for us, like you said, with even among the panel having different perspective nuances, but I, I think obviously we're going to be on the same page, but there'll be different nuances and, and we'll learn from each other. And I love that. I love that about the format that we're doing, but I think just the nature, like I said, it's been so, I know it's been longer for me than you that I've attempted to do anything in revelation. Yeah. When I used to teach it as a, as a required class in a survey class, when I taught at a Bible university, um, I told the students, I told the students up front, I said, you need to know that I have a love hate relationship with the book of revelation. So I'm going to spend a lot more time on the book of Hebrews than I will revelation. That so, makes total so sense. You, so if you want a lot of, if you want a lot about revelation, you should go take Dr. So-and-so's class. Cause he'll spend a lot of time on that. I'm not going to spend hardly any time on it at all. Cause I don't want, to. I was in a seminary and uh, became friends and it was a very conservative Baptist seminary. And I became friends with one of the professors, uh, a young guy who had been, trained under uh, at Dallas Theological Seminary. And, um, and one day I'm talking to him and he said to me, as tears showed up in his eyes, he said, I will talk to you about anything except eschatology and time stuff. He said, wow. that subject almost destroyed my entire class. And he said, I'm not, I'm not past the damage yet so that I can even talk about it. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Did I ever tell you this? I grew up in a church back East where um, half the faculty from Philadelphia college of the Bible attended. And the pastor was a oh. well-known celebrated alumni of Dallas. Mm. So we would have prophecy conferences in the summer and Walverd, Ryrie, Hendricks, wow. all Pentecost, all those guys came and spoke a different one each Sunday night. What I loved about it as a kid was when they did that, it was summer. I was out of school and it was a Sunday night. So my parents, I didn't make me go. Ah. So I, so I was like, I love prophecy conferences. I don't have to go to church <laughs> Sunday night. <laughs> Oh, but yeah, wild. we, we were, we were definitely in the flow of the Dallas dispensational yeah. perspective of, of the book. So, yeah, yep. but no, I'm, I'm excited. To, I'm excited about this time and I love what, what you're going to bring and it's going to be awesome. Be we awesome. will have, as Baxter would say, a large time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we will. Thanks, Paul. You're welcome. All right. Take care and we'll talk to you soon. Love you much. Okay.